Hello Grinder School. This is CFA Natural and welcome to Key Concepts in PLO. Today we're going to be talking about four betting in PLO. In particular about calling four bets. It somewhat relates to making four bets, but it's really more about calling four bets in Pot Limit Omaha. And the topics we're going to discuss today is why three betting and four betting is so much different in PLO than it is in No Limit Hold'em what the key assumption is in calling a four bet, a little something that uh, I like to call the proximity effect, and then we're going to talk about the four key reasons why you would not want to call a four bet. Okay, the four key things in a hand that would make it such that you would not want to call a four bet. Unpaired ace high hand, the hand has low connectedness, rainbow hand or a paired hand and then we'll do a summary to tie everything together. So let's get started with the first thing. Why is three betting and four betting so much different in PLO than in No Limit Hold'em? Well as you know in No Limit Hold'em three betting and four betting you can be done one of two ways. It can be done for value and it can be done as a bluff, a light three bet or light four bet. And either one of those can be extremely profitable when done correctly in No Limit Hold'em. So let's talk first about for value. Three betting or four betting for value in Omaha is a lot less desirable and a lot less profitable. And the main reason for that is because equities just run so much closer. And then secondarily, we almost always face multiple opponents. As you well know in like No Limit Hold'em, if you have a pair of aces and you go to the flop facing three or four opponents, you're a lot more likely to lose than if you're just facing one player. Yes, there's a better chance that somebody else will hit the flop and pay you off, so that's the good end, but the bad end is that when there are that many other people, even with four random hands, so a lot more likely that somebody will hit two pair or a set or some type of big draw. So in Omaha, we're almost always up against multiple opponents and the equities just run a lot closer. So we're kind of double whammied when it comes to three and four betting. For example, in No Limit Hold'em, Ace-Ace, which is obviously the best hand you can be dealt pre-flop, is 85% to win against a random hand. Okay. But in Omaha, Ace-Ace-XX is only 65% to win against a random hand. And think about that. A random hand, let's say somebody's literally dealt Queen-9-7-3 and you have ace ace xx you're only 65 percent to be them one out of three times you're going to lose whereupon in hold them uh, uh you know you're going to win 85 plus percent of the time against random hand that's a big difference 65 versus 85 trust me even more telling i think is that if you look at the best starting hand in hold them ace ace and compare it to the second best hand obviously king king you have a 66 percent edge because as you know if i have aces and you have kings, I'm going to beat you 82% of the time. You're only drawing to two outs. In PLO, you have the very best starting hand, ace, ace, king, king, double suited. You only have a 6% edge over the second best hand, ace, ace, jack, 10, double suited. And so literally, if you have ace, ace, king, king, double suited, and I have ace, ace, jack, 10, double suited, you're going to win 31% of the time. That's it. There'll be a lot of ties, and then I'm going to win you know, 28% of the time or something like that. And then the other third plus is ties. That's it. You just have a little bit of an edge over me with the best hand versus the second best versus in Hold'em where you have a 66% edge, best hand versus second best. So now let's talk about three betting or four betting as a bluff, the second kind, because you have value and you have bluff. To do it as a bluff is even less favorable in PLO than No Limit Hold'em, even less so than, than value, I'm saying. And that's because people so rarely fold to re-raises. They almost never do. And in addition to that, there are so many bad flops for even the strongest starting hand. So again, you're double whammied, just like you are for value, okay? People just don't fold when you three or four bet as a bluff. And no matter how strong your hand is, there's going to be a bunch of bad flops that you're just going to have to give up immediately, especially if you're facing multiple opponents. Um, and so, for example, if you have a hand like ace, ace, king, king, double suited, you know, ace, ace, queen, jack, ace, ace, king, ten, double suited, really strong, premium starting hand, and the flop comes 
six seven eight double suited uh, a two tone, but it's not uh, one of the suits that you have. And you're facing, say, two opponents. You just have to immediately fold. You're, all you have is a naked pair of aces. You have no flush draw. You have no straight draw. You're done. So it's uh, just really bad to be trying to bluff people because they're always going to be calling you. And then when you hit a flop, no matter how strong your hand looked pre-flop, you don't hit that board. You don't improve. You don't have a draw. You're done. So for both, uh, for both types of three and four betting, value and bluff PLO is very different at Hold'em and it's a lot less favorable and a lot less profitable all right let's talk about something that uh, has been coined and I didn't coin this someone else did but I think it's a great concept it's called the proximity effect the proximity effect states that hands that are usually strong do poorly against four betting ranges that are heavily weighted toward aces and what I'm going to talk about a lot in this presentation is that most of the time when somebody's four betting you in PLO, they usually have aces, okay? Unless there's some huge maniac donkey, their range is heavily, heavily weighted toward aces. So, for example, hands like King Queen Jack 10 or 9 10 Jack Queen, unsuited now, these are hands that will almost always play in a normal pot. We'll call a raise with these are good connected hands with, you know, Broadway cards. They have a much harder time making a straight if our opponent holds two of the four aces in the deck because of the proximity of these cards to the ace. This person holds two of the four outs that we need to try to hit a straight. And remember, with a hand like King Queen Jack 10 or Queen Jack 10 9, you don't have a pair anywhere. You need to hit a straight to be good. You could maybe hit two pair, but in that case, even, in addition, even if we hit a two pair, there's a good chance that somebody with aces has a draw to the nut straight and can beat us. So unless rundowns like this, and these are strong rundown hands, unless they have at least one suit, when we're 100 big blinds deep, they're a losing call, a losing four bet call to an ace ace xx hand because of the proximity effect. Because our cards are so close to that ace that we're losing on those key outs we need to make a straight. Okay, now let's talk about the four main factors that would cause you to look at a hand and decide that it is not worth calling a four bet, okay? And so the first one is an unpaired ace high, all right? So when we're facing a four bet, and actually, I think we missed one here. Here it is. Sorry, guys. I want to talk about the key assumption. I knew I missed one here. The key assumption when you're playing at the micro stakes is we want to assume that players four betting rangers are very tight and heavily weighted toward aces until they prove otherwise okay so a competent player and notice I put non maniac when I say competent I don't mean that they're a tag I don't mean that they're a really solid winning player somebody can be 67 8 you know VPIP and PFR and still be a competent player Okay, they, they have some weaknesses in their game. They're making mistakes. They're not a, a good player. But that doesn't mean that they're just pushing buttons and they have no idea what they're doing. And in PLO, anybody that's not some crazy maniac, anybody that basically has some idea what's going on and is thinking, is very rarely forbetting with less than an ace-ace-xx hand. If you think about it, it takes a lot more courage to forbet light in PLO than to just call a three-bet and see a flop. Okay, because PLO is a post-flop game. So unless your villain is some 8865 crazy donk maniac, you always want to assume that they have aces until you see different, until they've shown down a couple of times and you know that this person can four bet with a lot less than aces. Now, bear in mind that once a four bet's called, stack off ranges in pots, you know, four pot is, is really wide when the effective stacks are 100 big blinds. So take an example, if we're playing 10 PLO, and so somebody raises to 35 cents, a four bet, if they hit the pop button, is going to be about $1.20. I'm sorry, a three bet is going to be $1.20. So if it's then four bet, that's going to be up to like $4.30. So if that's called, there's going to be about eight sixty in the pot, less rake, which is going to be 40-something cents. So let's call it $8.20 in the pot. Okay, so it's just over 80, I say 80 big blinds, call it 82 big blinds in the pot with two players. 
And each player, having put four bucks in the pot and he started with a, a 10 bucks, is going to have 60 big blinds left behind, a tiny bit less. So you can see that the stack to pot ratio is less than one. You're going to have about 60 big blinds behind and there's a bit over 80 big blinds in the pot. In that case, you only need 30% equity for stacking off to be break even, even less with multiple players. If there's three guys in the pot, the pot is now going to be 120 big blinds and each player is going to have 60 big blinds behind. And the stack to pot ratio is going to be 0 0.5. And you're going to need less than 30% equity. So the point being, when the pot is that big, before you even see the flop, and you have less than a one pot size bet left, if that person has any decent pair, and in this case we're assuming they probably have aces, or any draw, it's going to be correct for them to put the money in. Forget that they're probably not going to fold anyway because they're not a good player. It's actually going to be mathematically correct for them to stack off if those aces don't improve. If they the flop comes king, nine, eight, and they have a pair of aces, and there's 80 big blinds in the pot, and they got 60 big blinds left, and they're up against you, it is correct. They only have to win 30% of the time. So you really got to be cautious in calling those four bets because a lot of people are just going to be going all in on any flop. And if you don't hit, you just lost 40% of your stack. Okay. We talked about the proximity effect. Now let's talk about the four key components or things about a hand where you would not want to be calling a four bet. The first one is a hand that has an unpaired ace high. So when we're facing a four bet against an opponent that's likely to have aces, as we just mentioned, that's the assumption we're going to make here at the micro stakes, holding an ace is like having a dangler because it adds almost no value to the hand. And we'd actually prefer not to have an ace at all. You guys all know what a dangler is. If you have a hand that say king, queen, ten, deuce, well the deuce is a dangler because it adds no value to the hand per se unless the flop comes deuce, deuce, x. In this case, believe it or not, your ace is going to be a dangler because your opponent has aces. So making aces up is worthless because that's going to give him top set. And many times we'll be sharing outs if we have some kind of straight draw. So the only unpaired hands that have an ace in them that are profitable for us to call a four bet when we're 100 big blinds deep would be a very connected double suited hand. I'll give you some examples here. Ace, queen, jack, 10, double suited. Notice we're suited to the spades and the diamonds. Ace, jack, 10, 9, double suited, hearts and clubs. Those hands, we have an ace, which is nil good to us, but we have a 9, 10, jack, and here we have a 10, jack, queen. Really connected and double suited hand. So if our opponent has ace, ace, x, x, and, and say doesn't have a suit, we've got two flush draws and these connected cards. Now we can profitably call a four bet. Doesn't mean we'll win every time, but we're plus EV to make that call. The other kind would be a low proximity three straight hand. Remember, low proximity means cards that are not close to the aces that our opponent holds. So the examples I'll give would be ace, six, seven, eight, double suited, because the six, seven, eight is low proximity to their ace. Ace, 8, 10, jack, double suited, hearts and spades. Again, the 8, 10, jack is not too proximate to the ace because our opponent has the two aces. We don't want cards that are close to it because he's holding the cards that are going to give us straights. So these are hands that you could profitably call a four bet. Any other kind of ace high hand, you want to dump. Okay, factor number two where you would look at the hand and say it's not going to be good to call a four bet would be a hand that has low connectedness. Now the more connected your hand is the smoother its equity distribution tends to be. And in the next time I'll talk more about defining what smooth equity distribution is. But in this case what we're saying is that the more connected a hand is the more likely it will flop straight draws with a pair or the more likely it flops a straight draw to go with two pair as well. Okay, so you have, again, double ways to win the hand, not just one way. More to the point, most hands which are not connected enough and can't profitably call a four bet should never have been three bet in the first place or called a three bet. Let's take an example. Take a hand like king, ten, eight, four with a suit. Now, a lot of people look at a hand like this and say, well, I have a suited king. I have a couple of pretty decent cards here. They're, you know, one gapped, eight, ten. And then I've got the king 10, so I've got two broadways and somewhat connected cards. This is a pretty good hand. And I've seen people raise with this hand and then call a three bet or three bet with this hand. 
This hand cannot profitably call a four bet even against a bad opponent who's opening too wide. So it should never be in your three betting range. And you should never be calling a three bet with it, which could allow someone behind you to then four bet. So if some donkey opens and you, uh, or if some, somebody raises and then some donkey three bets, some bad player three bets, and you call the three bet with this hand, thinking, well, I got a suited king and somewhat connected cards, someone behind you can four bet. And now you're going to have to just pitch the hand. You can't profitably call, you're going to lose, and you're in bad shape. So don't call four bet, three bets with hands like this. Don't make three bets with hands like this because they, they are, they're minus EV. Okay, They're not connected enough, and you need that connectivity to be profitable in four bet pots. That's what I'm really trying to drive home. Okay, factor number three that would make a hand not profitable, not plus EV to be calling a four bet is a rainbow hand. We just spoke about how low connectedness makes hands unprofitable to call four bets with. So it should be no surprise to you that being unsuited is going to drag down the profitability as well. What makes hands have smooth equity distribution, what makes hands powerful in PLO, guys, is hands that are suited and hands that are connected. So when you're not connected and when you're not suited, your hands are weak. And so this is a factor that is going to, should discourage you from calling four bets. Having a rainbow hand hurts your equity against a four bet a lot. And in fact, it's enough to make hands that normally play well in three bet and four bet pots completely unprofitable calls. And the example I give here is if you have a hand like queen, queen, nine, nine, that makes a profit if it's double suited. Because think about it. If it's double suited, we have two queen high flush draws, whatever the two suits are, and we have two pairs, queens and nines. We have two ways to make a set, and we have two ways to make the third nut flush. So we have a pretty nice equity distribution there in that hand. You change that hand to rainbow, all we have now is a pair of queens and a pair of nines naked. So we have two chances to make a set. Though nine, if we make a set with the nines, it's almost never going to be top set. And it instantly becomes a minus EV call against a four bet, where the person's probably holding aces and maybe a suit themselves. Okay, and the final factor that makes a hand not desirable to call a four bet is a, as a paired hand. And of course, we're talking not aces, right? A pair other than aces. Having a hand with a pair hurts facing a four bet for the same reason that it lowers your value facing three bets. It results in a more polarized equity distribution. And in big pots, we want a smooth equity distribution. So now I want to define for you what this means. Polarized equity distribution and smooth equity distribution. All right, a hand with a polarized equity distribution, and I gave the example here of king, king, seven, deuce, flops huge a very small percent of the time, like 10%. And of course, in that case, you'd flop a set of kings, which is almost always going to be top set. And it flops terrible the rest of the time, which is 90%. That 90% that you don't hit a set, you have a naked pair of kings, and that's not very good in PLO. That's not enough to win you a big pot the vast majority of the time. So that's a polarized equity distribution. You flop very big a small percent of the time, and you flop lousy the majority of the time, the vast majority. A hand with a smooth equity distribution, like Queen Jack 10 9, especially if you got some suits there, it flops huge occasionally, much like the King King 7 2, but it flops very well a good percent of the time. So instead of being huge a little and crappy most of the time, it flops huge a little and very well a good percent of the time. That's a smooth equity distribution. And that's what we want when we're getting into big pots, which is what four bet pots are. When you have a paired hand, you have a polarized equity distribution. You're only going to flop big a small percent of the time. Most of the time you won't. And so it's going to make it a losing hand for four bet pots. The only paired hands that really you can profitably call four bets when we're assuming our opponent has aces again is a single suited or double suited pairs with again three to the straight. So we're talking about connectedness again, right? So it has a pair, but it has really good connectedness and low proximity. Again, we don't want to be close to those aces because that's taking away our, our straight outs. So I'll give you a couple of examples here. Nine nine seven eight suited to the diamonds. We got a pair of nines, so we have a way to make a set, 
And then we have the 789, which is connected, plus we have a suit. This is a hand with some decent equity distribution, and we have you know, a chance here to hit something big. Same with this Jack-Jack 10-9. Here we're double suited, spades and hearts. We have a pair of jacks. We can hit a set and a very connected hand. But bear in mind that not all double suited hands are profitable to call a four bet with. Because hands like King King 10 Deuce is double suited, but we're too proximate to the aces here. And you know, this deuce is a dangler. You know, compare this to 910 Jack Jack or 7899, you just basically have your kings. You are double suited, but this is not a plus EV call 100 big blinds deep. Same with 10, 10, 6, deuce. You've got your dangler. See, these are not connected hands. Do you notice? You've got a pair. You're double suited, but there's no connectivity to these hands. Up here, we have very connected hands, and that connectivity is what makes the hand plus EV in a four bet pot. Okay, so let's uh, summarize here. I've played a lot of pot limit Omaha, guys. And I really can't count how much money I've seen people lose at the micro stakes by calling four bets when they should be folding. Okay. And most of the time, it's because they assume their opponent had a wider range than aces. And that's talking aces unsuited. Most of the time, our opponent often you know, has a suit to go along with their aces. So aces with a suit is a very strong starting hand. That's usually what someone has, unless they're a complete maniac donkey, when they're four betting you. Until they've shown otherwise, you've got to give them that benefit of the doubt, and you've got to be willing to fold your hand, except for the ones I outlined here that were profitable to make a call. Okay, that's where the money is lost, is people making these calls that they shouldn't be making. And I can't tell you how much I've seen people lose. Just as importantly, don't make or call a three bet without knowing how your hand will stand up to a four bet, and what your plan's going to be if that happens. Okay, you've got to be thinking ahead. So, don't three bet somebody and don't call a three bet without thinking, okay, what do I do if this person four bets? Okay, and calling a three bet meaning if there's somebody behind you that could four bet. If it's just against one person and there's no money to close the action, you're closing the action, there's no one behind you, then that's okay. But if there's people behind you or if you're the one that makes a three bet, you have to think to yourself, what am I going to do if I get four bet? Is this hand going to be able to call? And if not, well, then maybe you shouldn't be calling the three bet or making the three bet. Omaha is a post-flop game, people. I cannot uh, emphasize that enough. It is a post-flop game. And we do not ever, ever want to put a ton of money in the middle pre-flop unless we're facing a huge maniac like I described earlier that can, we know is just pushing buttons and doing this with any four cards or we have a super premium hand, one of those big ace-ace-king-king Ace, ace, jack, ten, double suited. Ace, ace, king, queen, double suited. If we don't have a big old premium hand, we do not want to be pumping money in and four betting and calling four bets. Okay, so that does it for my presentation. This is part two of key concepts in PLO. I will be doing about four or five of these. And so uh, I hope that you enjoy it. And uh, as always, leave any questions or comments in the forums. And uh, this has been CF The Natural for grinderschool.com. And until next time, good luck at the tables.